Hello, good afternoon. It's 12 o'clock here in Accra. You're listening to the Star Midday News. Find a vehicle and then send him to the hospital. Coming up this afternoon, family of deceased O'Reilly senior high school student accuses school authorities of attempts to cover up circumstances surrounding the death of their 18 year old son. Find a vehicle and then send him to the hospital. And on arrival, the boy was dead. The teachers didn't show any concern. Me, that is my headache. That is my problem. Meanwhile, family of the accused finally pay a visit to the home of the deceased to commiserate with them. Also, coming up, NDC accuses Electoral Commission of attempting to rig the 2024 elections following rejection of the party's call for a telecast of its scheduled meeting later today. And enter your data and transfer you, move you. That's what happened. This is what we are saying. It's, this is not an error. This is a deliberate error to rig election. A deliberate it's a deliberate error. error. Because the person who did it, if he has no intention, why then has he moved the people without their knowledge? Still in this edition, daughter of Kwame Nkrumah and former CPP chairperson Samia Nkrumah reaffirms her father's pivotal role in Ghana's history following controversy surrounding who should be regarded founder of Ghana. And of course he led our country. He, he laid the foundation mm -hmm. for what Ghana is today. And much later, Concerned Farmers Association issues 48-hour ultimatum to government to outline permanent solutions to addressing Galamse as they threaten to vote no confidence on President and his government. We've got details of these stories coming up shortly. Please do not go away. Star News is coming to you live on Ultimate 106.9 FM in Kumasi, Empire 102.7 FM in Takrade, Zeps 95.9 FM in Zebila, Nisim 100.1 FM in Lamshao, My Star Radio in the USA. Also live on Facebook on Star 1035 FM and on starfm.com.gh around the world. This is Star 103.5 FM, Star News, informed, in-depth, in touch. Many thanks to you for choosing Star News. I am Nurain Abbas. We begin the bulletin this afternoon. The family of deceased O'Reilly senior high school student, Edward Saki, are accusing school authorities of attempting to cover up the circumstances surrounding the death of the 18-year-old boy. Edward succumbed to his injuries after he was stabbed in the chest three times on Monday by the accused Gordon Mowley during an altercation. Gordon has been remanded into police custody after appearing at the La Circuit Court. Family of Gordon have since paid a visit to the deceased family to commiserate with them. When asked why it took so long to visit, the family of Gordon explained the school has refused to communicate with them. This sentiment was shared by the family of the deceased who say the school's silence make them complicit. I rushed to the house and met the boy father and the family. Um, they narrated what happened. I wasn't there, but they narrated um, what has transpired at the school. Well, on that evening, we couldn't do anything, so we went back. Then the following morning, I had information that uh, the GS wanted to meet the family. So I joined the family, and then we welcomed the GS, led by the uh, Director General of Education himself. So he gave the assurance that they were going to investigate the whole matter. On their part, they will be investigating the administrative aspect of the matter. Oh, yeah, oh. And 
criminal. But then the police also was handling the criminal aspects. Uh, so when they finished their report, they will reconcile the reporters of meetings. They they show all concern, you know, like what happened. They were they were not concerned. Uh, I wasn't there, but the information I got was that uh, when my grandson was stabbed, when he was stabbed in a pool of blood, the teachers were there. Nobody offered his or her vehicle to take the, the child to the hospital, and like what we all saw in the video, it was the school children. It was the student who put themselves together to carry this boy all the way to find a vehicle and then send him to the hospital. And on arrival, the boy was dead. The teachers didn't show any concern. Me, that is my that is my problem. You had grandpa of the deceased speaking to Star News. Now, uncle of the deceased told the news team the family is expecting a favorable outcome of the Ghana Education Services investigation. We didn't inform us when the incident happened. They didn't call anybody from the family. And for us to hear that they did the same thing to the uh, accused person's family, they couldn't even inform anybody from the family. But they have to even go to the police when they saw the news. You know, it's really, really bad, and we don't know why it happened like that. That means everything they said about the school, which is that uh, the teachers were around when the thing happened, is true. Because everyone is saying that it happened right in front of them. And this is very bad, and we need explanation. We really need to hear something from the school. What really, really happened for them to tend to be unconcerned about the whole incident? And this is really disturbing the family. What role do you think the school played uh, in this whole crime season? I think uh, first of all, uh, we, we gave our son for them to, you know, we know our son is in school, so he's in their hands. But for them not being able to even call us, because they have the numbers of the, uh, both parents, they didn't call either parent or anybody. Secondly, uh, we also found out that be, they were there when the whole thing happened no one followed uh, the, the the victim to the hospital no one phoned the ambulance or anything i think there is a lot to this uh, that we have to hear from them so as gas came here and they said they are going to do their investigations very well we hope that they will come out with the right investigations because we have done ours as well uh, we know that a lot we will see a lot of problem came from the school because if the school should have reacted early we believe that maybe our boy could even be saved yeah so i feel like no a lot a lot a lot a lot thought came from the school and authorities and they need to answer to that well you had uncle of the deceased speaking to star news there but now let's go over to the premises of the home of the deceased boy because our co my colleague nanaya asari is there Hello, good afternoon to you. Welcome to Star News. So you are at the premises. What is the current mood there? Well, Lorraine, currently the family of the deceased, that is Edward Saki, uh, Saki are unsatisfied with the uh, meeting they had with the accused family. Being that the accused family were represented by only females, that is guardians of the accused. And the deceased family is insisting that they go and come back with a male representative because it shows seriousness. And so they being only females is telling them that they are taking the issue lightly. But earlier on when they came in the morning, it was quite a calm meeting and it was very emotional at, at that. So what is the next step for the deceased family? The deceased family are carrying out saying that they are waiting for the, uh, the date the court settled for the next hearing, that is the 19th of September. And they are also waiting for the two-week um, time promised by the GES to also come out with um, investigations as to regarding the issue. But for the accused family, they are saying that they are waiting on God because as, as it stands now, they don't even have any financial means to... Um, acquire a lawyer for their son and so both families are waiting for um 
the schedule dates for our, our court. Yeah. So have they left or are they still there? They, both families have left. Both families have left. Right. Thank you very much. You heard my colleague Nanaya Asari bringing us live updates from the home of the deceased. Now, we can also hear from auntie of the accused who has been commiserating with the family of the deceased. Okay, I still know the news we miss are not here, but the game is a color post school. They are the only team post school. Femina, so I need money. If you come on, I'm on the way for the home. Never know the market. Yes, we can't even get home. We are not in my way. No, 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 you had auntie of the accused person she spoke essentially what she said is that she doesn't know her nephew to have such a character and she's equally surprised as everybody at the turnout of events Time now for Campaign Trail. You know that we are your election hub. On Campaign Trail this afternoon, the Opposition National Democratic Congress has accused the Electoral Commission of attempting to rig their 2024 polls in favor of the ruling NPP. The NDC had requested a live broadcast of its meeting with the Electoral Commission today. The party will present its observation of the Provisional Voters Register in the wake of growing concerns about discrepancies identified in it, such as alleged illegal transfers. The party argued that the move would enhance transparency and uphold democratic values. However, the Electoral Commission has rejected the call, reacting to the EC's decision. Deputy Director of Elections Dr. Rashid Tanko Computer said the activities of the Jean Mensah-led administration make it difficult for the commission to be trusted. He spoke on news tonight on sister station GH1 TV. Was removed today. You are seeing people being transferred without that. You are sitting here. You are not sure whether hmm. your name has not been moved from Accra to somewhere in my hometown, without your knowledge. If somebody get hold of your ID number and everything, they just sit down in their comfort of their room and enter your data and transfer you, move you. That's what happened. This is what we are saying. It's, this is not an error. This is a deliberate error to rig election. It's a deliberate, it's a deliberate error. To, to, to because the person who did it, hmm. if he has no intention, why then has he moved the people without their knowledge? To, to the extent that they even printed new ID cards. Hmm. For this innocent woman, because they are illiterate, they don't know that this card they are holding is not their card they collected. Tomorrow will appear there. We will go... Uh, with our evidence, our observations, but we find innovative means mm. of making sure that the media cover. Yeah, the, describe the these innovative means. Oh, it's innovative. Uh, how innovative are? Is it grabbing a phone and what's, uh, what's... That's why I'm saying innovative. It's describe less limited. Means because you see, you said you find innovative, innovative, innovative means, means for the for, for it the to media be to cover it. public. Because we feel that the register is a public document. Right. It's not a, a national security document. How you had Deputy Director of Elections of the NDC, Dr. Rashid Tanko Computer. Now, still on the NDC, flag bearer of the National Democratic Congress, John Romani Mahama, has promised to address key challenges facing the people of Atebubu municipality and nearby communities. These challenges include low voltage electricity, lack of access to potable water, and poor health care services. The former president made this commitment during his visit to the area as part of his four-day campaign tour in the Bono East region, aiming to appeal to voters ahead of the upcoming December 7th general election. My colleague Abdul Hanan Adam has more in this report. 
For years, residents and businesses in Atebobo municipality in the Bono East region have been dealing with low voltage electricity, a problem that has impacted their economic and social lives. During his campaign tour, the NDC flag bearer John Dramani Mahama highlighted the electricity challenges in rural areas with economic potentials. Speaking during a mini deba at Atebobo Amante, the former president pledged that if elected, his administration will prioritize resolving the low voltage issue by implementing measures to ensure a stable and reliable power supply for all. From Atebubu through Yeji, all the way to Bimbila, uh, Yendi, all that place has low voltage because all the substations are in the center. There are no substations on the eastern part. And so it's something that we have taken note of when NDC comes. We're going to put substations on the eastern corridor so that it will raise your voltage and make your electricity more stable. On the issue of water, John Mahama underscored the agency of expanding access to clean and portable water. small town water systems. Now, small town water systems are upgrade this small town water system no. Regarding healthcare, Mahama acknowledged the difficulties many Ghanaians face in obtaining affordable and reliable healthcare, particularly in remote areas. He announced that plans are already in motion to provide more medical resources to the Atibubu government hospital. maternity ward Meanwhile, the former president in his address called on all Ghanaians to support his vision for a better Ghana, promising a government that will listen, act, and deliver on these critical issues. Reporting for GH1 News and Star FM, Abdelharan Adam, Atebubu Amantin. Let's still remain with the NDC because the parliamentary candidate for Ketu North, Eric Adam Adbana, has stated that his candidacy has energized the party's base in the constituency, especially among young people. Speaking at the official launch of his campaign in Doje on Sunday, Mr. Adbana expressed that the aspirations of many young people in Kethu North hinge on the outcome of the December 2024 elections, a cause he is deeply committed to. The Kethu North NDC campaign launch, which was held in Doje on Sunday, drew thousands of NDC supporters from across the Volta region and other high-ranking officials of the party who joined to show support for Eric Edemagbana. Speaking to the media after the launch, Edemagbana boasted that the NDC in the Ketu North constituency has received a tremendous rejuvenation following his election as the party's parliamentary candidate, stressing that the hopes of thousands of young people in the constituency lies on the outcome of the December polls. I see my candidate uh, as a renewal of hope for the young people of Ketuno. I see my candidate as a message to the Ketuno constituents, as a message to the entire country that indeed the NDC as a political party recognizes the power of the youth and our ability to effect change. I am passionate about my constituency and I'm willing to put in the hard work to ensure that we produce the results that the young people are looking out for. Adam Abana is targeting 95% of votes from the constituency for both himself and John Mahama. We rolled out an agenda 85% as our target. But I can tell you for a fact, 
after going around a constituency with our community engagement, radio programs, support to young groups, and then meeting the young people and the chiefs of this community, we would have to review the target upwards. I am confident that if you vote today in Ketuno, the NPP will not be able to get up to 10% of from the NDC, let's go to the opposition NPP because flag bearer of the party, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, says his decision to focus on digitalization is due to the enormous benefit it has in solving many of the economic challenges confronting the country. According to him, he has not run away from the economy, but that digitalization will help in shaping it up. He was speaking during a stakeholder engagement as part of his campaign tour of the Tema Central, West and East constituencies. His campaign in the Tema enclave took him to Tema Central, West and East constituencies, where he interacted with mechanics and traders, held stakeholder engagements, and addressed community connect rallies in the three constituencies. At the stakeholder engagement attended by the clergy, traditional rulers, and the business community in Tema Central, the MVP flag bearer explained why he has decided to focus on digitalization. According to him, those who mock him for choosing that path do not understand the importance of digitalization to a strong economy. Many, many economic problems can be solved with digitalization, but many people didn't quite understand it. They thought I was abandoning economics to go and do digitalization. Responding to concerns from freight forwarders about high taxes imposed on clearing goods from the ports, Dr. Baumia reiterated his desire to change the duty system at the harbor to make things cheaper for them. I've been thinking about it, and I want us to move to a flat duty system so that in cities, uh, so that we can have predictability. Because if there is no predictability in the rate of duty at the port, there will be no predictability in the price of goods in the markets. At the Community Connect later in the night in the Tema East constituency, which attracted scores of NPP supporters, Dr. Bahamia asked them to give him a chance to make the country better. The flag bearer is expected to continue his tour of the Greater Accra region in the Medina and Adentan constituencies on Friday, 6 September 2024. And let me correct myself there, the NPP are in power, they are not the party in opposition. So on campaign trail, daughter of Ghana's first president, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, and former CPP chairperson, Samia Nkrumah, has reaffirmed her father's pivotal role in the nation's history. This follows debates surrounding whether Kwame Nkrumah should be regarded as the sole founder of Ghana or not. Speaking in an interview with Bolare on Star Chat, the aspiring Jamara MP emphasized the foundational impact of her father's leadership on Ghana's developing on Ghana's development, describing it as unparalleled and foundational. It was a prophet. An a African prophet? Kwame Nkrumah, your dad was a prophet? Yeah, I, I believe so, uh, because he's so well into the future. He, hmm. And he, so he organized, he, he wrote, he was a philosopher, organized them, and of course he led our country. He he laid the foundation mm -hmm. for what Ghana is today. He, and, and then, above all, he wrote everything. Everything, what he thought, what he believed in. And, and that's so important for the younger generation. Because we, we can't say, if, if we are in doubt about anything at all that he did mm. or said, read his books, you know. And of course, he gave us the guidelines and I think the ultimate solution for Africans to attain our dignity and that is for us to unite. Samia Nkrumah also revealed her reasons for declining an offer from Nana Kwame Bediako, also known as Cheddar, to be his running mate in the upcoming elections. Cheddar, leader of the New Force Movement, had proposed the partnership, expressing his admiration for the Nkrumahist tradition and his wish to continue the legacy of Ghana's first president. Yes, Cheddar did, yes. But I told him that I, I've invested too much in Jomoro and um, I believe the Nkrumah's tradition must be represented in Parliament, um, in our decision-making, um, that decision-making body. Because as it is today, it is not, not with that clarity and conviction. So I, I, 
Yes, that I've invested too much in that, and I think I want to see that happen. But in you believe life. in his ideology. Then Kwame Bidiaku is a man on the move. You believe that he has that and what it takes to get in there. Is that that you want to stay no, on the side? I believe watch? many Ghanaians mm. have what it takes inside and outside politics. And that brings us to the end of the campaign trail, but not the end of the bulletin, because up next we have sports and my colleague Christian Kobi Kwashi joins me in the studio. Christian, good afternoon. What's in, what's in sports? When um, angry fans invaded the pitch at the Bavaria Sports Stadium in Kumasi yesterday following Ghana's 1-0 loss to Angola, um, my colleague Benjamin Yamwa Benghazi visited Bavaria Sports Stadium after Vans vandalized property after and failed this report. So these are the scenes of the aftermath of the vandalized billboards that were destroyed by the fans who poured out onto the pitch, some of them actually poured out onto the pitch when the game came to an end and the players had left the pitch they poured out and in an angry mood after the disappointing defeat of the black stars some of them decided to vent their spleen or anger on the billboards that were beside or you know, by the side of the stadium so you can see for yourself clearly vandalizing some of the billboards of some of the sponsors who had their billboards pasted on some of these uh, boards you can see can see them for yourself. I mean, some of the few, it was just a number of few fans who began actually by throwing uh, bottles, water, and other objects onto the pitch after Ghana considered the late, late goal against Angola in the 93rd minute when Zhao Felicio, Felicio got the winning goal for the team. And so they began throwing water bottles and other objects from the stands onto the Tatan tracks at the Babayara Stadium. And it didn't end there when the referee blew his whistle for the end of the game and the players had moved out of the of the pitcher to say some of the fans decided to come in because at the point some of the gates were opened into the inner perimeter so some of them so that was my colleague Benjamin Yamwa who visited Babaira Sports Stadium yesterday and then uh, after fans vandalized um, the property at the Babaira Sports Stadium. Now, meanwhile, the police, however, managed to arrest a fan in the relation to the disruptions and vandalized stadium properties despite it being too late to salvage the situation. However, the breaking news coming in suggests that the National Sports Authority, NSA, has closed the Babaira Sports Stadium for maintenance until the next round of the international matches. Now, the stadium will then be open for Ghana's next home match on October 7th, 2024 this year. The, the NSA is now expected to engage Asante Kotoko to find an alternative venue for their Ghana Premier League matches as soon as possible. Thank you very much, Christian, for the, for the latest update in sports. Let's bring you more stories this afternoon. The Concerned Farmers Association of Ghana has issued a 48-hour ultimatum to government and security agencies to address the escalating issue of illegal mining activities. The association, led by Nana Obwadia Buatin Bunsu, is demanding immediate and effective intervention to halt the environmental degradation and contamination of water bodies caused by the illicit operation. The association's ultimate, or ultimatum, I beg your pardon, which begins tomorrow, underscores the urgency of the situation. According to Nana Obwadia, if no significant action is taken within the specified time frame, his members will express their dissatisfaction through a formal vote of no confidence in President Nana Adodankwa Akufado's administration. So we've, we've come out with such a statement, and what we are saying is that President said something, that we should be a citizen by not spectators. So if we should act like citizens by not spectators, we, the concerned families, are acting as citizens, and we are telling the security agencies, we are giving them just 48 hours just to stop this. They can do it, and if they do not do that, then we will know that at the end of the day, we have no president, or at the end of the day, too, the president said that he will put his job online, his presidency online. And he has said, maybe the president has not heard or has not seen what is happening. That is why we have issued this statement to all the security agencies. If really they are there, that is sweat agents to protect life and property of this country, you have to do that. Because at the end, the forest is gone. Now, before we go, the world witnessed a staggering 8.1 million premature deaths in 2021 alone, 
attributed to air pollution. In response, efforts are being intensified to raise awareness and prevent human activities contributing to air pollution. This revelation was made by Dr. John Kinsley Krugu, Executive Director of the Environmental Protection Agency as Ghana joins the global community to mark the 2024 World Clean Air Day. There's more in the following report. The International Day of Clean Air for Blue Skies is commemorated annually on September 7 in recognition of the fact that clean air is important for the health and day-to-day -day lives of people. While air pollution is the single greatest environmental risk to human health and one of the main avoidable causes of death and disease globally. According to the United Nations, a staggering 99% of the global population lives in areas with polluted air, suffering its far-reaching consequences. Air pollution is linked to ailments such as stroke, heart disease, lung cancer, and respiratory infections, hence the commemoration of the day. Addressing the gathering ahead of the day in Ghana, Executive Director of the Environmental Protection Agency, Dr. John Kinsley Krugu, disclosed that over a million people have died as a result of inhaling polluted air. The recent state of the global air report also indicates that air pollution has become the second leading risk factor for death, both in terms of total global population as well as in children under five years old. We'll bring you the extended version in subsequent bulletins. And this is where we draw the curtain on this afternoon's edition of Star Midday News. For more news, log on to starfm.com.gh. I am Nurain Abbas. Many thanks for your company.